don't act surprised. You know exactly what you did. Is there nothing out of this group of people? There's nothing that you want to know. Don't stand outside. I'll call you back in when you're actually going to be quiet. It's Monday today and the start of a fascinating week here at Kings Langley Secondary School in Hertfordshire. All this week we're conducting an ambitious experiment using cutting-edge science. Leading psychologists, physiologists, neurologists and educationalists will be monitoring stress levels in the school. They'll be trialling a new intelligent vest that gives instant readings of teachers' heart and respiration rates. We'll also be measuring their levels of cortisol, the fight-or-flight hormone. Never before, with an ordinary section of the population, have scientists tried to establish if your DNA can make you stress-prone. But our team will be attempting just that. And we'll also be monitoring our teachers' blood pressure every 15 minutes throughout the school day, so our experts can pinpoint extra stressful moments. Our specially built hide will allow our scientists and other experts to observe the teachers and look inside their classrooms. Kings Langley, a typical secondary school with just over a thousand pupils and a hundred staff, will serve as our test bed laboratory. For a school that had previously been in an Ofsted category of underachieving, the last Ofsted inspection for us was utterly crucial. And the level of stress as it rose during that week was frankly enormous. Myself and the staff had committed wholeheartedly to the recovery of this school. And inevitably, um, the worry that came about following that inspection or during that inspection was huge. So I would not wish to repeat that. <laughs> While the entire school will be involved, some of the teachers have agreed to be more closely monitored and observed by our team of scientists and experts from across Europe in this groundbreaking experiment. The research team includes Chris Gibbons, a psychologist with a background in stress research, and physiologist and neurologist Professor Gavin Reynolds, both from Queen's University Belfast, Rita Paradiso from Pisa in North Italy, Nadia Wager, a psychologist from Buckinghamshire Chilterns University College, and former physics teacher Alom Shah, who's been involved with this idea from the start. Alom is actually with me now in this van, which we've had specially converted so that the experts and I can closely observe the teachers and watch them in their own classrooms. Alom, this week sounds like it's going to be very exciting. What treats are coming up? We've got a whole range of scientific tests looking at the psychological and physiological results of stress. So by the end of the week, we'll have a really detailed picture of stress in the classroom. It's now 9am on Monday morning, start of a normal school day, but also of an extraordinary week. Lessons are just beginning, okay. and we're joining Karen Bird's yes. English class with Year 11. Five. We're tackling some oh. exam preparation. Yes. Let's take a look at what's going on. Can I read? <laughs> no, it's not. It's actually not. I just read no, something instead. Good. All I said was Ooh. I ran back into the ice. Not I meant to put house. But right. Because I, I was thinking of a metaphor. Bless you. Didn't kind of work out. <laughs> well, the band did. Right. Okay. So. I'm trying. You are. Very. <sighs> Alan. Watching Karen here working away in her classroom, her clothes look entirely normal, but she's wearing one of these vests, is that right? That's right. Let me show you. I've got one right here. And as you can see, it's basically a lycra vest. And what's remarkable about it is that the sensors are actually woven into the fabric. So she, she can't actually feel that she's wearing anything other than a vest. The only thing to indicate that is anything different is this one single wire that comes out the bottom of it. And what information do we get from the vest? For us today, it's collecting an ECG trace, that's her heart rate, and also measuring her respiration, how deep she's breathing and how often she's breathing. And all that information is being beamed from Karen's hip pack back to a computer. That's right. In real time, we can see right now what her heart rate is and her respiration rate as well. Fantastic. Looking good, Steph. Well, hey. <laughs> Come on, get some more down. Two lines isn't enough. 
Daniel, you still haven't written anything. Right. Can I borrow? Yeah. Bullet points for planning. OK. Firstly, what kind of situation are you going to be in for that to happen? For you to suddenly realise that there's a car that's drawn up and you are in trouble? I'm getting chased with mad by a madman with an axe. OK. Chased by mad axe man. Well, before we have another look at what's happening over with Karen, let's see how she sees herself. I'm Karen Bird. I'm a teacher at King's Langley School. I teach English and history. Sometimes I teach drama and ICT. Karen uh, has come up the hard way in teaching, really. She was a learning support assistant at the school before I arrived, uh, was desperate to become a teacher. She felt it was the career for her and worked very, very hard indeed. Came on board and trained at this school as a uh, graduate teacher on the graduate teacher programme. Did wonderfully well. I don't think I am prone to stress. I'm fairly laid back. Obviously, there are days when it's quite stressful, but no, I don't think I am particularly stressed most of the time. Well, she's got a um, superb affinity with youngsters who struggle, and particularly those that have literacy difficulties and so on. <laughs> Well, I'm now joined by Dr. Mark Hamer, a psychophysiologist from University College London, and also Professor Terry Looker from Manchester Metropolitan University. Welcome to you both. Now, Mark, what is the significance of the data that we're getting from the vest? What is it actually telling us about Karen? Firstly, we've got heart rate. It's a very powerful stress indicator. It's the first thing that really, really reacts. Um, we've also got respiration rate. Um, when we get stressed, we need uh, more oxygen uh, to supply the muscles and so that's again that's a very powerful stress indicator. Paragraph. Well, that's a really good start, good girl, well done. So if you mark in where the paragraph should be. <laughs> right James? Yeah, done. done. Cool, have you checked through it? Well, Terry, what do you think about the information we can get from the vest? We need to look at this over a longer, longer period. So during the course of the day and the week, then maybe we'll see some changes. And it's those changes we can look at, um, changes in the heart rate and the blood pressure. And maybe then by looking at what the teachers are doing, how they're feeling, um, what their type of personality is, maybe all that will add up to something that we can make some conclusions from. And paragraph changes. If you think that maybe the person... Lana, do you know what you're doing? Please listen. Well, you weren't because you were talking. <coughs> Lana? Lana? OK, so you need... To... Are you seeing a link between what Karen's doing and, and the readouts at all, Terry? Maybe when somebody like this a moment ago said, you know, we were, we were talking and she's challenged them to stop talking, maybe we'd see a little bit of a change then. Uh, that's the sort of thing we'd be looking for. So you're checking it? I only got to there and he jacked it OK. Illuminated. What's fantastic about having the readings as well as the video is that on the video, she always seems calm and in control, right? But what's very clear is with certain students, her biometric readings are changing. So clearly, her feelings are changing, but she's very good at maintaining an exterior of calm and coolness. Not much there, has to be said. How much room is to do? About two pages. Two pages. Mm -hmm. Um, sorry. I mean, oh dear. How are we doing, Tom? Fine. <clears throat> OK, well, let's find out a little bit more about this fancy vest. On the outskirts of Pisa in Italy is the Smartex lab. Smartex are at the cutting edge of textile innovation and have been working on the development of an intelligent vest that could revolutionise health monitoring. This is a system that uh, is uh, completely similar to a shirt, so the, the user will not uh, see any difference from a standard shirt. The electrodes are woven into the fabric of the vest. The wet t-shirt includes nine textile electrodes. The four electrodes placed on the thorax allow to monitor the respiratory activity. 
The West uh, is able uh, to get information about uh, the ECG and to get information about the heart rate. And uh, when you are stressed, uh, this kind of parameter change, increase. The instantaneous readings can be monitored continuously because the VEST sends data via Bluetooth straight into a computer. While the VEST has been developed primarily for the monitoring of heart patients, we are using it to measure key indicators of stress as our teachers go about their work. It's now 10 a.m. and Karen's second lesson of the day has just started. This time it's year seven and a debate all about vegetarianism. They're living creatures. Hmm. So we've got some we've got a little bit of a disagreement going on there. Either we're worried about um hurting living creatures or fish aren't living creatures. Hmm. Charlotte. Although animals are treated cruelly, we need protein to stay healthy. OK, it's a good point. I think we've made that point. <laughs> I'm joined in the observation van by Richard Fawcett. Richard is a former head teacher who now works in schools supporting school leadership. Richard, what do you make of our experiment? Having awareness of how the body is responding to the situation you find yourself in must be very important in terms of then dealing with the problem. So anything that can be done to help people be more aware of something which is very important in the teaching profession, that is stress not just of the individual lesson but of carrying out the whole job in its entirety, is I think both important and very valuable. Now what do you make of Karen's teaching style here? Is she showing any signs of stress to you? How do you think she's doing? Well Karen is clearly an extremely well prepared teacher. She knows where she's going with this lesson and she also has a very easy relationship with the class. We're able to see her deal very effectively and quickly with any minor matters, you know. She has just said, shh, and everybody is quiet again. A little interruption and she's managed to put it aside very quickly and easily without putting the child down at the time. The farmer was very suspicious. Superstitious. Super, superstitious man. And he said, well, I'm not going to... Um, have 13 piglets because it's unlucky. Well, we've got the intelligent vests to give us a, a window on what Karen's body is really up to. Terry, Mark, have you noticed anything? From what we can see, there's, there's indications that she's coping quite well with this. Uh, not, the stress response isn't too active. So it isn't all a front. She's actually her calm exterior. Yeah. She's actually she's, quite she's comfortable. She's doing OK, yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's smiling there. Uh -huh. She seems to be actually enjoying this class. Mm. <laughs> so, animals like farm animals are intelligent. So, so I, would, I would like to counter the argument that they're not as intelligent as house pets because I don't think that's true. Now, as we can see, as we watch Karen's class, she's being assisted by teaching assistant Helen Goodchild. Now, Helen is also wearing an intelligent vest, the second one to be used outside the laboratory. Now, Richard, first of all, tell us how important is the relationship between teacher and teaching assistants in terms of keeping stress in the classroom under control? Well, it's of fundamental importance. What you see in this classroom is clearly two people who are a team. It is important that the two people working in the classroom, or sometimes more than two people, understand each other, know where the lesson is going, know what the role is going to be of each other, and are happy to respond because what is always planned is not necessarily what always takes place. So they need to be very responsive to each other. So that relationship is really fundamental. OK, thank you, Richard. Well, Helen has three children of her own, two of which are at the school, and they have special needs. And I can tell you that Helen packs in far more to her life than most of us. Uh, Helen Goodchild, I'm a teaching assistant who works mainly in the English department, and I'm in my fourth year here now. The biggest thing that, that does stress me is often that teachers can sometimes not fully appreciate that some students learn and think very visually. And I get a bit stressed sometimes when I can see how stressed they're getting because they're not accessing the curriculum. And an hour in a lesson when you feel that uncomfortable can be really hard. So I do feel quite stressed sometimes on their behalf.
That's pretty disgusting. Peter. If we don't feed the cows, then to kill them. Now, Terry and Mark, what are we seeing from Helen's vest about her stress levels at the moment? At rest, we would expect Helen's heart rate to be somewhere between 70 and 80. And so what we've got now, it, she seems quite relaxed because it, we're looking at it's around about 190 to 100. It, it's a great way to see how people are responding in their natural environment. Um, and, and we can gather an, an awful lot more data uh, from this than, than we can in, in a laboratory situation. If we don't feed the cows, then to kill them, then we wouldn't be fed by... Uh -huh. OK, so we have, we have to feed the animals to actually pr provide the food for us. Now, those vests can tell us about the stress levels of the wearers at any one moment, but we're also keen to find out stress levels across the whole school. I don't think I am prone to stress. Well, I think I do get stressed. I have an outward appearance of being laid back. Stressed. Laid back, I would say. Pretty stressed. I wouldn't say laid back. Prone to stress. Pretty laid back. Chris Gibbons of Queen's University Belfast is the scientist in charge of this part of the experiment. All the teachers, teaching assistants and support staff have filled in his in-depth questionnaire. A similar study has been undertaken with teachers across Europe. But in Chris's survey, he goes into more detail about how well teachers actually cope with the pressures of their job. The questionnaire builds on the EuroTeach project, which was the largest survey done of teachers. But the difference with this one here is it looks more at the coping side of the equation. So it's looking at problem-based coping, emotion-based coping, and cognitive-based coping. Good problem-based coping strategy will be better time management. Uh, a poor problem-based coping strategy would be perhaps losing one's temper with a pupil and not feeling in control at the time. Well, Chris Gibbons in the film there is actually going to be with us tomorrow to tell us more about these questionnaires and the coping strategies. But, Alan, I was just wondering what you make of these questionnaires and how significant they're going to be. I think the questionnaires are really at the heart of our little experiment because the questionnaires will tell us what teachers themselves think of their own levels of stress and the whole point of the questionnaire or, or the assumption behind it is that if you think you're stressed or feel you're stressed then you are. Now these results have revealed some interesting differences in the way that Karen and Helen cope and deal with stress in the classroom. Karen does use positive coping strategies very well, particularly taking a hands-on approach to deal with problems. But she does score moderately high on emotional exhaustion. The questionnaire also reveals her to be high on levels of personal achievement, so it seems that the students carry her through the day. Helen, on the other hand, tends to be over-conscientious, scoring high on self-blame. But she does adopt a range of coping strategies, such as using support networks and voicing her concerns when faced with difficulties. Well, it's break time, and Karen and Helen have had a relatively stress-free start to their day. But for others in the school, things aren't going quite so smoothly. We're going to catch up now with head teacher Gary Lewis as he meets up with the finance manager Tom Horton to chase up some figures for the school budget. Resources committee next week. Yes. Um, I want to try and have the first draft of the budget sort of pencilled out by then. Now I know that you and I had said... Oh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I thought you and I had said that we might be able to do that. And you need by when, when well, do you need that by? Well, what do you want at the moment? What's well, this? I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the, the month-end stuff that I've got to prepare, plus the sixth form funding we've had in, which you sent to us, which I'm under query with the LSC, and I'm waiting for an answer back from them. All right, well, I'll leave so, it in your capable hands. Thank you. And I'll give you a bit, chat a bit later on. It's <laughs> yeah. okay, Tom. Thanks See so you much. later. Yeah, Bye. 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 Now, Richard, you are an ex-head teacher, so you know all about what it's like to work with a finance manager. Do you think they have a stressful job? I do. The expectations <laughs> on them are really high. They have to plan the budget. 
monitor the budget and account for it and things don't always work out the way you had hoped yeah. so they have a lot of demands upon them well let's have a look at Tom's experience the uh, IT company we have our IT uh, supplied by went into liquidation yesterday uh, which is obviously going to cause us quite a few problems of uh, maintenance of our computers so that on top of everything else that's been going on was a, a particular low for myself and my department. He remains calm, although sometimes I think he's not quite so calm. He gets very nervous around me. We're a good foil. He's a classic accountant. I'm slightly more cavalier as far as money is concerned, and I know uh, if you speak to him, I'm quite sure that's where his source of stress will be as to what, he what the head is spending money on next. <laughs> Now, we do have some sympathy for Tom, so it seems only fair that we offer him some greatly needed TLC. Finding ways to relieve stress is the other part of the equation this week. So we've brought in Masur Simon Thornton to help. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty relaxed just watching Tom have his massage there. Mark, does massage relieve stress? In theory, definitely. It, it, can, it can reduce tension in the muscle. Um, it can improve blood flow, like blood flow and right? circulation in general, which obviously has implications for uh, blood pressure. The fact this is still in his place of work is possibly going to limit how effective it really is. It's on the relaxing bit. <laughs> we can't that was relaxing, was it? <laughs> OK, well, our teaching assistant, Helen, now has got a free period. And unlike Tom, she's had a relatively easy morning so far. So we've decided to see how she responds to a potentially more stressful situation. She's still wearing her intelligent vest and she's oh. about to undergo a okay. difficult task yeah. set yeah. by our expert Mark. Okay, Karen, what I'm going to ask you to do is trace around the mirror image of the star uh, as quickly but as accurately as you, as you can. Uh, you've got five minutes to do this, so good luck. Okay. Oh, you can really see the concentration on Helen's face there, can't you? I mean, she's doing pretty well, but you can see she's really focused on it. <laughs> Alan, you tried this earlier, didn't you? It's quite, it's more difficult than it looks, would you say? I did. I, I'm kind of in awe of her performance, quite frankly, because I, I couldn't even get around the start. It, was, really? it is really tough. I want to have a go. <laughs> Terry, is this kind of thing a good indication you, you know some people are going to cope well some people aren't yeah and it, it, this is a very novel situation for helen so you know she's confronted with this for the first time she's reacting to it as you can see and um, this would be equivalent to something happening in the classroom that she's not aware of or not expected to happen yeah. and we can got all her telltale signs sure is from there, the yeah. vest yeah. Well, welcome back, Mark. You've left Helen there in the Hall of Mirrors. <laughs> it's fascinating watching, I can tell you, because she's focusing so hard. Tell us a bit more about this test. Well, it's, it's a mentally demanding, it's a very frustrating test. You can just um, see that in you, her face. You can see the concentration. Um, what, what we generally find in the lab is that um, how she responds with a blood pressure, a heart rate, is actually correlated to how we, she would respond to a stressful situation in real life. Now what we can see is that uh, Helen's heart rate has really increased. I mean, it's, it's going up and down quite a lot between sort of low 90s up to over 120 there. Is that something you would expect to see? Yes, it's, it's, this is a very common response. Um, this, is a, this is mentally demanding and it's a very stressful task. Now how do you think Helen's coping? How do you think she's doing? It's a moderate stress response. It's by no means not the largest that I've seen. She's coping moderately well, yeah. The data from the vest, together with the psychological profiles, is revealing a lot about our teachers. But for the first time ever, we're going to combine these findings with physiological information. New groundbreaking research at Queen's University Belfast is in the very early stages of suggesting that our DNA may play a part in determining our levels of stress. Professor Gavin Reynolds, based in the university's medical school, is the scientist leading the research. 
I'm really excited by this study. We're looking at teachers who are responding to stressful events, uh, looking at their levels of anxiety, relating the genetic factors that we're looking at with um, psychological measures. We hope very much that this will provide us for the first time with an understanding of potential genetic factors that may combine with environmental stressors to help us understand why people respond in the way they do to stressful events events and develop anxiety or not. The secret of our ability to deal with stress may lie in our levels of the hormone serotonin. Serotonin is a chemical messenger that communicates between nerve cells in the brain. It controls many of our behaviours, including fear and happiness. We're looking at uh, the gene for one of the proteins that's important in serotonin function, and that is the 5-HT1A receptor that gene for the receptor uh, may be in two forms. One form makes people more liable to depression and we think that maybe that's important in uh, determining levels of anxiety, determining response to uh, stress and so on. Gavin is working alongside Chris Gibbons on this possible link between DNA and the findings from the questionnaire. He helped with the collections of the DNA samples on his earlier visit to King's Langley School. We're asking you to give us some physiological samples which very rarely are taken. The first one, this is the measure of uh, uh, one's disposition to be anxious and it just swivels out as a cotton bud at the end and the idea with this cotton bud is just to put it on the inside cheek and spin it around 360 then back again, 10 times on one cheek, 10 times on the other. If you have any questions at all, please just uh, wave your hand, I'll come round. Back in Belfast, Professor Gavin Reynolds analysed the samples. Well, having taken the swabs containing the cells, we isolate the DNA from the cells and take it through the PCR reaction to make multiple copies of the gene for the 5-HT1A receptor. This is then separated on a gel, which allows us to determine the genotype, that is the variation, the form of DNA for that gene that each individual has. Well, I have to say, Alan, combining the psychological with the physiological information sounds really exciting, and that your DNA might actually reveal how stressed a person you are is fascinating. Yeah, the scientists are really excited to be helping us with our study because they've already shown in other studies that this particular marker is associated with anxiety and depression and what they're hoping is if they can show the same link with with stressed out teachers well sorry maybe we shouldn't call them stressed out but <laughs> with teachers who experience stress that it will help them with their research and, and give us a whole new marker for, for stress. Thank you for a lovely lesson. That's okay. You're very welcome. Richard, what do you make of all this? I mean, would it help teachers to know whether they've got this, perhaps, predisposition towards stress? If we can actually get DNA not only solving crimes, as we see on the television regularly, but actually solving the problem of stress and helping us to understand it more, then I think people will be really welcoming this research, especially if it pays dividends afterwards. The results from the DNA study will be revealed over the next few days and hopefully on Friday we'll be able to confirm whether or not a teacher's ability to cope with stress really might be coded in their genes. Yeah, properly. Yeah, yeah, what page are you on? 20. <laughs> Where is, what line are you on? Well, it's now the fourth lesson at King's Langley School. They have four one-hour sessions before a late lunch at 20 past one. We're still getting our uh, spying look into the classroom here. She's not, she's just reading it. Don't forget, they are really, really um, upset. Yeah, they really do believe that Juliet is dead. Above the clouds, as high as heaven itself. Oh, in this love, you love your child so ill that you run mad seeing that she is well. Terry, what are your thoughts on this class? It's a year 10 class, another English lesson, of course, with Karen and Helen. 
What's going on? Well, looks like they're getting very involved, both of them now, aren't they, with the, with the, with the pupils. There's a lot of interaction going on here. And then, I mean, when we look at stress, it is human interactions that give a rise to a lot of the stress that we, we see. So that might be interesting to look to see what's going on here now. On this, yeah, remember? He knows she's married to Romeo. Yeah, and he knows she's not really dead, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. He's yeah. so making them feel as guilty as he can. Exactly. So he is going to... He's got the upper hand here. Yeah. yeah. Friar Lawrence is almost, you know... In these confusions, heaven and yourself had part in this fair maid. He's in control of the situation. He is in control. At this point in the play, he is in control because he knows things. He was, He's like the vicar. He, he married Romeo and yeah. Juliet. He's like the, the family vicar, yeah? Now, what about the vest? What are they telling us? So we've got Helen's heart rate there, round about the 100 mark. N nothing too stressful going on, it seems. It, it, exactly, yeah, they, they seem well under control. Yeah, that's, that's why it's written the way it is. It's supposed to be read. The stress response be active here, though. I mean, you know, we may see some of these changes because they are involved, they're performing well, it's arousal, it's excitement, they're getting really into this. And so you know, we, we've got to get it sort of over that all stress isn't bad. There is good stress and there is bad stress. Definitely. And they're using their stress response here for the good reasons. This is not cortisol release. <laughs> this is this is good old noradrenaline and adrenaline giving them that performance. It's the, it's the excitement and the achievement, isn't Absolutely. it, that's going on yeah. there? And the pleasure yeah. of actually seeing a class working well uh -huh. together in something that you have prepared and set off yeah. and are then contributing to rather than actually taking a lead. Because the interesting thing there is that both Karen and Helen are contributing to discussions and perhaps shaping them but not taking a very forceful lead over them by the look of things anyhow. So, but no, I took him to Hatfield House to see Romeo and Juliet open air and it was really, really good. A very happy class, I'd say. Uh, I, I think so. And, and one, <laughs> well, one in which um, I dare say they'll manage to get to lunch without too many difficulties. Well, you mentioned lunch, Richard. I don't know about you, but I think that's a very good idea. <laughs> Well, it's now 20 past two and everyone's back hard at work after lunch. Karen's now taking a, a, another year 10 class with teaching assistant Helen there. Richard, what happens after lunch in a school? I mean, is it a less stressful time or a more stressful time? Hmm, depends what's happened at lunchtime. <laughs> um, I think if it's uh, been fizzy drinks, it'll be fizzy behaviour, frankly. Uh, but you hope that people have had the chance to relax a bit. But you've got to recognise we're getting now towards the end of the day and by the time this period's over, Helen and Karen have probably met something like 150 children in the day, 120, 150 in their classes, and that takes a lot out of you. I'm tight to comfort them both. Yeah? Yeah, thank you. Turn around, stop being silly. You, right, Ed, sorry. You are really beginning to get on my nerves now. Sorry, Eddie. Let me read you this. Raymond. Enough. I mean, what have you noticed from observing the class after lunch? Terry, have you noticed any differences? I think the, the kids are a bit of a more bubbly, you know, the, student, the pupils are more bubbly here. And um, the teachers seem to be uh, active and are moving around a lot more and getting involved a lot more. So whether or not they did at lunchtime worked, I don't know. <laughs> so maybe they did have yeah. a boost of energy over lunchtime. They may have had a power nap at lunchtime, <laughs> which is very good. I mean, that's uh, one way of boosting your performance in the afternoon. I don't think many teachers get a chance for a power nap, <laughs> Terry, over lunch. No, that would be, be, <laughs> be ideal, I think. But, uh... <laughs> Now, in order to get a picture of how our teachers are responding to stress across the whole day, Helen has been wired up to one more piece of sophisticated equipment. Her blood pressure has been constantly monitored since 9 o'clock in the morning. And now Nadia Wager, a psychologist from Buckinghamshire Chilterns University College, is just starting to get a printout of how this has changed during the course of the day. Blood pressure. Mm. Um, just to see the sort of fluctuations that have happened. Uh, well, I had a little look and I did notice a few times that it was going up. Right. It's quite interesting for me because it's normally quite low. You would expect it to be somewhat higher than what you'd get in a doctor's surgery, right, so don't sure. be alarmed oh, okay. by that. Nadia is going to be giving us Helen's blood pressure results a little later on. But the most tried and tested way of monitoring stress is by taking measurements of the hormone cortisol. And we couldn't leave that one out. 
Together with the blood pressure results, the cortisol will give us a really clear picture of the ups and downs of a teacher's day. Now, Alom has been out and about, dashing around, collecting samples every two hours. And Karen and Helen have been very obliging and given him samples of their saliva. One more sample of spit. Um, that's your one. Thank you. And that's your one. I know you're going to enjoy you. this. Just a minute of chewing. I'm really sorry. Go on. Got you've got to do it again. Sorry. Oh, no. I really got to do it. Yeah, okay. you, you've really got to do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Is it wet? Mm-hmm. Go on, then. That's about enough. Lovely, thank you very much. So, um, cheers. Thank you. See you later. Cortisol does a lot of things in the body. It's, it's sometimes referred to as the stress hormone. Uh, it, re it reflects and relates to levels of depression and levels of anxiety. The cotton wool pellets are being sent daily to King's College Hospital in London, where once the saliva has been extracted, agents are added to each sample. The colour variations are then analysed to indicate the cortisol levels for each individual at different times of day. Higher levels of cortisol indicate the person is producing the hormone because they're in a state of stress to suppress the immune system. So it's uh, a fairly reliable indicator that they are in a state of stress. <laughs> Measuring cortisol is a procedure that takes some time, so we won't have those results back today, but we will be revealing them and discussing them throughout the course of the week, along with the findings from our exciting DNA experiment. But we are beginning to get Helen's blood pressure results for today. Terry, can you tell us a little bit about why blood pressure is an important indicator of stress? Well, in the stress response, the heart rate goes up and the heart pumps out the blood harder. So um, you're pushing out her pressure into the rest of the body. Whereas yeah, Lady Calculate, oh, yeah. absolutely right. Nadia, welcome to the observation van. We've just been seeing you on the screens there, setting up your experiment with Helen. Can you explain to us what you were doing? Yes, well, actually, this morning when Helen first came in, we actually put on an ambulatory blood pressure monitor, which is a cuff like you'd normally have put on at the doctor's surgery. But it's got microphones built into it, so you don't need to use a stethoscope. And we have a little battery power pack on her side, which is what I'm just fiddling with, which actually records automatically for her. So it's, at the moment, it's taking her blood pressure every 15 minutes. So will she feel the cuff expand like you do in the doctor's yeah. surgery? she gets all that sensation. I have checked and it's not hurting her, which is really good. <laughs> right, yeah, sometimes it can be really tight. Now, I know we're going to be talking about this, this at length um, in a couple of days on Wednesday, but just briefly, what do you hope to see? I mean, what can this tell you? Well, it's looking at, at the fluctuations throughout the day, and really what you're hoping is, is during her rest periods, her blood pressure's managing to drop down again. It doesn't matter how high your blood pressure really goes, providing it comes back down quite, quite quickly. It's so easy. It's so easy to follow. Prolonged high blood pressure is unhealthy. And Helen's blood pressure readings do show a clear trend of actually rising during the course of the day. Whilst the particular highs and lows are a direct response to events and situations. Raymond! Enough. Well, that's nearly it for today. Uh, I have to say, we've just had so much information. Richard, your thoughts? Well, I think it's been a fascinating day to um, look at stress in so many different ways. And I think the proof of the pudding will be in what this all turns up and what we're able to do with the information which will benefit the teachers. Mm. It's been very good. Terry, have you enjoyed today? I have. It's been an interesting experience today because we're looking at many different ways we can look at stress. There's questionnaires, we've got a cortisol, we've got looking at what you can do about stress with massage. There's lots of things we've been, be we've been observing the behaviour. Yeah, yes, it's been a fascinating day. And so much more coming up. Well, thank you all very much for a great day. Well, it's 4pm and the caretaker is just beginning to lock up. What we've seen today, just on day one, has been a remarkable series of firsts. We've seen the first time the intelligent vest was worn outside the lab. 
We saw for the first time how teachers are having their DNA tested to see how prone they are to stress. I mean, Alon, today's been a great day. What were the highlights for you? Well, collecting all that spit from Karen and Helen, which uh, was fun. Oh, the um, cortisol, yeah. yes, that's something to look forward to. Uh, but really, I'm um, looking forward to tomorrow when Chris Gibbons is going to join us and he's, he's going to talk us through the question and reveal some of the findings, so I'm really excited about that. Tomorrow, it's the turn of PE teacher James Dyson and media studies teacher Liz Ship to be our guinea pigs. My students think I'm stressed, but I don't think I am. They just don't do the work you want them to do. Chris Gibbons will be joining us to give more results from the questionnaire and we'll be getting the first results back from our DNA testing and the teacher's psychological profiles. Psychologist Susan Blackmore will be joining the discussion. I just want more. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan, you can't do it in your socks. What do you think, Dibs Big? Just doing my shoelaces. You haven't got a shoelace. Go on, back over. <laughs> and Nadia Wager returns to continue her week-long investigation into the blood pressure readings of our teachers. So I was 220 over 50. Yeah. 